Hi, Jose Gomez from Cloud Folios here. In our next video here, we're going to sign into Cloud Folios and we're going to use this to chronicle some of the art that uh, that I've created. So um, this is just going to be an example for artists to uh, know exactly how to apply Cloud Folios to start uh, chronicling, start cataloging uh, your collections. Uh, your individual works, and um, I'll just give you some best practices here. So let's go ahead and sign in. I'm just going to sign into my account here. I've created an empty account for us to be able to learn with. Now, when you first go into Cloud Folios, you're going to notice that uh, the interface is pretty minimalistic, it, uh, it's, but it's very clear as to what everything is. So right now, Cloud Folios is telling me I don't have any actual folios, so I need to actually create one. Let me click here. I could either, either click on Create a New Folio, or I could click on the left here, Create a New Folio. And the folio is really just a container to collect, to, to contain your individual works. Um, and in Cloud Folios, you do have to create one in order to contain your works. Now, you can do that by naming it based on collection name, uh, based on uh, if you're doing some type of a series, the name of the series, or you can title it something like, you know, these are my single works or single editions, whatever it is that you, however you want to separate your work and catalog it. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to create uh, a, a folio here called Cloud Folios Demo. Now, a few things happen here. Um, right now, my company brand is set to Cloud Folios. You can actually have multiple brands, and you can do that by going into the Manage Your Art Brands uh, option here. Um, also, the release date is, is the date, official date of release for this particular collection, and you can describe this. So we're just going to put in a little description. This is a demo of the Cloud Folios system. And I can also put an artist statement in if this is a collection. Um, I can do that. I can also tag this as well. This is always smart to do because later when you need to find stuff and you've got hundreds of different folios, you want to be able to remember uh, or to find what you're looking for. So I'm just going to use the word demo here to, um, to catalog this and um, then ask you a few other questions like the style of folio. I'm going to leave a lot of the stuff alone for the sake of the demo. Um, but the style of folio, we have a few different styles uh, that once you create the folio, it'll create kind of a gallery, an online gallery or website uh, for your works. Um, you can uh, also determine what kind of privacy you want. So if you don't want to make this folio public just yet, you can do that. Um, if you want to um, set the default privacy of the artwork you upload to uh, public or private, and notice it's, it's made public by default, but nothing will show up if I leave the folio privacy at at private uh, or not public, if you will. And then um, I've got here, uh, you know, whether this portfolio contains uh, my work only or this folio does not contain my work. And, and that's a distinction there for, uh, for our collectors. If you're a collector um, or if you have a collection that you want to archive on here as a folio, you just simply mark that as it is not, does not contain my work as opposed to an artist who's work it will contain. So I'm just going to save this folio here. And by the way, on the right-hand side, you'll see here that there is going to be an address for this for this folio. Um, that this is the public address where people can come to actually see the works once you make the folio public. All right, so we're going to save this folio. And immediately the folio is created and we can start uploading. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go up to Upload New Works here. I'm going to go to my demo folder. I've got a few uh, works here that I can upload and you can do as many of them as you'd like. You can either, you know, just highlight them all or you can maybe select uh, different ones by holding down control if you're using a PC and you can select different works. I'm going to go ahead and select three here that I want to, uh, to archive. I'm going to click open. And what Cloud Folios begins to do is it uploads the work right to the server and takes care of all the kind of resizing and everything it needs to do for the web. And now I'm presented with the works right in front of me with a few different icons. I can, uh, I can reorder these if I need to. Uh, this is for the sake of presentation online. I can delete works if I need to. Um, I can also um, edit details, which we'll do in a second. And I can also make this artwork private or public. So right now it's set to public. I just set it to private. I'm going to go ahead and click that lock again. Now it's set to public. Now remember, this entire folio right now is private, so no one online can actually see what I'm doing. 
There's another little, little feature we have on this screen where you can update all of the titles. So I can click on update titles and it'll actually give me a box here so I could do it all at once instead of having to click on each individual piece um, to edit it. But let's go ahead and let's go to, let's go in to one of the works so I can show you how this works. Uh, once you go into the work itself, you'll see that it gets a little bit bigger and we can uh, title the work. So I'm just going to put in a demo title here just to kind of show you how this works. Um, if I'm if I'm not the creator of this, I can put in who the artist is. So, you know, I can put in, for example, you know, Andy Rose, one of my favorite uh, photographers. Um, but this is my piece. And we have the release date. So if this was maybe released uh, on January, and February, on February 1st, I can put that date instead. And a little explanation of the work. Now, this is important because this does show up in all the public galleries um, that you're accepted to on Cloudfolios. It also um, shows up on your own kind of website that we create for you. Um, so it's, this is an important uh, little bit of information, but it's also searchable too. So I can put some information in here that says, um, you know, image of uh, woman in red material. And I can tag it too. So I can say red, say scarf, woman, whatever I'm, I feel like later I may need to use to refer and to refer to this image with uh, and search for it later. Um, and maybe I'll just put in here um, eyes closed. All right, so maybe those will be my tags. If I have a video explanation of this piece, let's say on, on YouTube, on, uh, on, on either I have a, a, a MP3 and MP4 somewhere on Vimeo. Um, we can do also SoundCloud uh, embed codes you can put in here if you'd like. But you can put either the URL or SoundCloud embed code. And this will show up if you're on the public galleries of your piece. So wherever somebody sees this piece on our website, you'll be able to click and actually hear the artist's explanation. Also uh, off of the QR codes that we print on exhibit tags, um, when somebody QRs it, they'll be able to go to a page and it will take them to your audio or video explanation. You can also classify this work. We have a number of different categories that so you can classify it. Uh, with. You can choose to make it public uh, and you can choose what folio you're saving it in. And of course, we've got one folio called the Cloud Folios Demo. So I'm going to go ahead and save this work information. So, so I can save everything so far and I can scroll down. Now, this is when it starts getting really interesting. Um, you can uh, record your available editions. You can record produced works. You can record where you've exhibited this work and what awards it's won. So we're going to do the first one. Let's go ahead and create an, uh, an edition. And we're going to create a limited edition. Um, the medium on this, we're going to do a G clay on metallic paper. Now, those are completely arbitrary, but you'll be able to, as you go to the other works, I'll show you in a moment, you'll be able to uh, reuse that same uh, medium over and over again. Or you can continually create new mediums if you need to. Um, I'm going to do uh, the width on this one's going to be 12 by 18. Um, yeah, we'll do 12 by 18 and then just uh, with a depth of one and that's just going to account for the frame now if i really wanted to get accurate here in our demo i would probably bump this up a little bit because we're going to be framing the entire piece and the piece that is what we're selling or we may just say i'm just selling prints in that case 12 by 18 would be accurate um, we are going to limit quality quantity or we can this could be an open edition and we could just make the quantities unlimited. But we're gonna limit the quantity this time. We're gonna limit it to five, and we're gonna put a general price on this of $500. I'm gonna save this edition. And now we have an edition of this work. Now I can create more editions. I can create, for example, an open edition. And this will be G Clay on Lester paper. So just to distinguish the, the, uh, the Editions. This will also be 12 by 18, and I'm going to do unlimited quantities of this. This is going to be $150. So I can track all of the editions of this particular work in one place. Now, produce works are when you act, when you pr let's say, for example, this is a photograph. So I don't have a produced work when I have a digital image, unless I'm selling the digital file. But if I'm selling the prints, then I need to actually create when I print a a, a an actual instance of the work, I need to 
record that as a produced work. And there's a number of reasons for that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add the produced work. And it's going to ask me which of the two editions am I, am I creating? Did I create a work? Did I do a print of? Uh, in this case, I'm going to do the limited edition. And this one is numbered five. Now, our system automatically adjusts this number. And of course, you can override it by saying, no, this is print number two uh, out of five. But uh, what we do is we, we do it, uh, we number them in reverse order. We assume that what you want to do is make your number one more exclusive. And so you may want to either, pr either print them or create them in a backward sequence, or if you'd like to do them in the proper sequence, then you can manually number them. So uh, I can say this is going to be my, you know, my first one. Um, the date I'm creating it is today. Um, yes, the sale price is going to be the same. This is the serial number the system is assigning to it, but I can override that if I want to, if I have my own scheme. Uh, is it going to be signed? Yes. Uh, the last known location is a studio, so I'm just going to use it arbitrarily, and I can put some additional notes. Now, when I save this work, it will, it will save it to our system. So now we've got an actual produced work. I have this in inventory. If I go to Art Inventory, you'll see this actual feature is an upgraded version. So we're only right now cataloging, but if I, if I was a, a, an upgraded member to our Emerge level or higher, I would be able to see all of my produced works all together. And that's great because I'd be able to sell them right off the site. I'll be able to record the sale, record the person who sold it, uh, who, who bought it, and they'll be able to also create a Cloudfolios account to track all the art that they've purchased from me or from other Art Cloudfolios artists. But going back to the actual work, um, you can see that there's one produced work here, and I can do as many of these as I want. Okay, now let's say I want to destroy this work. Uh, I can do that as well. So I can uh, just either delete it, or if I was an Emerge member, I'd actually be able to record the destruction of the work and still preserve the addition information. Now, by the way, we have a place here called the Public Gallery. I'm sorry, not the Public Gallery. Uh, we have a place here called the Public Ledger. And the Public Ledger actually records all the instances of creation, uh, of transfers of art, um, and the value of those transactions. We actually make this a public ledger so people can validate art uh, when they need to and see what the history of an art piece was. So we record all of that within our system. Another thing that we do, um, really interesting, once you create a produced work, you are able to, if you're an Emerge member or higher, you're actually able to generate your certificates of authenticity with the Cloudfolio serial numbers and everything maintained. So it's a really good idea to upgrade when you can, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, the next thing you can do here is you can also add your exhibition history. So if you want to um, tell the system, you know, what exhibition you were in, who the organizers were, what the venue was, and what the general month and year was, you can do that. And you can also record your awards. And so once you get all this information in the system, you've now got a great little chronicle of this particular piece. You now can, on a regular basis, come in update information on the piece, and you can do that across as many of them as you want. Now, one of the things that's really neat, let me see if it'll actually let me do this. If I can click on this, it might take me to, there's the actual public page that I have the direct link to as the artist, and so it lets me see and preview what this is going to look like. So if you notice, demo title, the year, um, my, it's a photograph by me. Um, there are no additions right now uh, that are available for sale. Uh, and I see here the information that I put in for the description. I see the available additions, uh, and then I can see other works in the Cloud Folios demo uh, folio. So I can click on those as well, and it'll take me to those works. Now, notice I haven't filled anything out there. So only the work that I did and created additions to are able to be seen. And of course, all of this shareable on social media. So very interesting uh, how this all works out. Now, if you notice, if I click on my name, it's going to take me to my actual public page, which if you notice, the artist is still preparing to upload new work, check back later, because I haven't made anything public yet. So nothing is available to be seen. Nothing can be accessed. Uh, there's really no information here, uh, but this is something that we can uh, show you in a subsequent uh, video. Uh, if I want to go back to my Cloudfolios account, click on the little cloud, and now we're back in our Cloud Folios account, ready to create new folios or works. I hope you enjoyed this demo. We'll be creating some more, showing other features of the system. So uh, stay tuned.